Greetings, Crad here. Today I'm going to show you how to properly swap out the bezel on an Overready Torch Lab boss light. So, the bezel, pretty obvious, does a few things. Um, protects the light from impact on the front end of the light, holds the internals nice and tight, keeps dust and water out of the light. All that good stuff. But you might want to swap it out based on your uh, aesthetic preferences, or maybe uh, say you don't want the the bezel that comes with the light that only has some little notches to allow light to escape. That way if the light's uh, down, you can see that it's on. Um, maybe you want to swap it out for a still uh, steel um, crenellated bezel. It, striking purposes, aesthetic purposes, whatever you want to go with as far as that's concerned. Or in this case, you want to go back to the uh, stock. So, uh, unique to the titanium light, you'll see that the internal housing, I wish my camera would just focus on one spot, right? Uh, you can see that the internal housing is actually a copper pill. Um, Tom has done this to ensure proper heat sinking and the titanium light, since titanium is uh, not a very naturally good material for a flashlight. Uh, he wanted to make sure that the, the heat dissipation was still good, so it has this uh, this copper internal section. Um, that being said, the other lights are going to be assembled the same way. Um, there's not going to be much variance in what you need to do between the titanium version of the boss and any other version. Um, I do highly recommend you get the wrenches that Overready sells. They sell these at cost, and that's just because they feel kind of bad that you, you pretty much need these wrenches to get this job done. So these are water jet wrenches. Um, the way that they're cut, the way that practically any water jetting works is that they're going to be slightly uh, different in diameter, one side versus the other. Uh, so Tom recommends that you use <coughs> the wrenches with the um, logo on the left side whenever uh, you're positioning the bottom wrench and the logo on the top or correction on the right side for the top one. Um, also take the head off of the uh, the unit and give yourself about a 1 16th inch overlap where the actual separation occurs. Position the wrenches, turn them counterclockwise to one another once you break that seal and this is really the only time that you need them, is to, to break the seal and set the seal. Um, once you break that seal, you can finish loosening it by hand. Here you get a look at the copper internals on the boss light. And the um, optic. So, while we've got this cracked open, Let's go ahead and swap out the optic, just to give this video kind of a, a dual purpose. Now that does lock into place in three um, sockets on the internal of this board here. And that's really important to note, that when you go to um, put everything back together, that you have these pegs locked into place. Obviously if you have the misaligned look, they're there's a lot going on on this board, right? You don't want to tighten something down and have those legs pressed down on uh, any spot that they're not supposed to be pressing down on because that could obviously do some damage in there. So I have the kit with the narrow flood, medium flood, wide flood. So I go ahead and try out the wide flood. So you can see some frosted optic. Be gentle when you're seating it. That's now in place. You can see it's pretty flush. I mean, not not flush, but it's pretty pretty well seated. I don't don't want to give the wrong impression here with my words. Um, so both of my bezels have the installed black O-ring on the outside. If you can see that, um, installed lens covered in my fingerprints. And um, glow ring 
glow ring. Glow in the dark O-ring. Let's let's just call it a glow ring. Uh, installed on the inside, right? So yours may not come this way, depending on the options that you select uh, during the checkout process on the OverReady website. Uh, yours may not come with this glow in the dark O-ring uh, lens and uh, black O-ring already installed. Uh, in that case, what you would want to do is remove it from your existing one. Um, we'll go ahead and show that with uh, this stock bezel. Um, so as you can see, there are Acme threads inside. Um, it's best, or I find it's easiest, to work with the threads, not against them, to actually get up underneath that O-ring and pull it out. Uh, try not to stab the O-ring. Um, I know Dan likes to use kind of a, a metal dental tool or uh, what we call in the Navy a scribe um, to get underneath there. I'm using a toothpick because I don't have a scribe at home. Um, after that, you can just pop the AR coated lens out. And what I'm probably not going to actually show is the removal process for that black o ring, just because I feel like it would take me a little while uh, messing around with it to get it out. And I'd probably just bore you to death while I'm doing it. Um, but what is important to note is the o ring actually, the black o ring actually sits inside of a groove. So when you uh, go to install that in your new bezel, ensure that you install that black O-ring inside of the groove. Um, there. See if you can see it. it. Has its own little housing there. Make sure that that's fully seated in there. Go ahead and uh, drop the lens in. Feel free to wipe that down first if you want. Um, or you can wipe it down after, whatever. There's actually a little ledge in here that that needs to set on. So make sure that your glass is seated properly. You don't want one end sticking up. Then you can go ahead and drop in the glow ring and just put that in place. Sorry, I've had a lot of coffee this morning and not a lot of food, so my hands are shaking a little bit. Should have thought that through, right? There we go. Glow ring installed. Now you got a, a solid housing here, um, covered in my fingerprints. <laughs> Good to go. Okay, we're gonna put this guy back together now. Um, you can go ahead and get it started by hand. Uh, one thing to note is, as long as this uh, copper portion here or whatever it happens to be made out of on your particular boss has a little bit of uh, shine to it, a little bit of glean, uh, it should have enough lubricant already. Um, it's not a part that's going to be taken apart often. Um, so it's not as vital as, say, uh, the threads here that you go ahead and uh, relubricate that. But if it does seem like it's bone dry, uh, take a little bit of NIO gel, um, just a, a very small amount. Put it on the threads, um, maybe kind of work it in a little bit, then go ahead and start screwing down your bezel. Once it gets about to here, you can see there's still a little bit of a gap, and that's pretty much as hand tight as you're gonna get. My thumb's just gonna continue to slip around if I try to get it any tighter. <clears throat> so, go ahead, put your tools back on. Uh, like Tom said, get that little bit of an overlap there. This is actually where it's more important, not so much for taking it off. But you want that little bit of overlap just to make sure that the the head is centered properly. Um, the bezel's centered properly on the bottom part. Uh, otherwise, if you uh, say you go wide with the tools down here and up here, uh, you might get it slightly off center, and it'd be really hard to tell. But there might be it might kind of canter to one side a little bit more than the other. Most people probably wouldn't even notice, but if you want to go for perfection, like Tom. Uh, center it like that. Go ahead and uh, put your other side on. You want there to be no gap between the two tools and tighten clockwise. Uh, you'll get to a point just like with your hands where um, your tool is just going to slide and you're not actually going to get any tighter. Now you have a fully installed um, bezel 
on the head of your boss light and you're ready to um, plug it back in. Screw this down and you're good to go. Boom. Thanks for watching.